Good morning, YouTube. Well, hope you liked uh, last week's videos on the uh, Alabama. And now we're going to uh, tour the submarine USS Drum and see uh, how much of this we can see. I would guess that this steel decking uh, would be a little slippery when wet. But uh, that would have been up there, the two platforms would have been for the lookouts. And the, uh, the bridge, we're walking actually towards the, uh, the bow of the ship. So let's go down in and check it out. And of course, the stairs are nice and steep. So this is the uh, forward torpedo room and uh, each of the, the six torpedo tubes and uh, reloads were in here. Um, they were... So I'm sure you've seen many, many submarine movies with them uh, loading them. And that's an idea just how big a uh, Mark 14 torpedo was. It's uh, 21 inches in diameter and 246 inches, so a little over 20 feet uh, long. So this would have been uh, officers, two men's stateroom, sink folds down, the mirror and so on. Fold down desk, lockers, drawers for storage, personal items. And uh, here's the officer's wardroom. And uh, right next to it would have been uh, a galley. And here's the other end of the, uh, the wardroom with more officer's quarters right next to it. And two steps down is the captain's quarters and uh, just he'd be able to tell the depth and uh, just by looking up make sure you know you want to keep track of what's going on Kitchen. over here would be a, a, a three-man stateroom not a whole lot of room between those middle and lower and upper bunks and the chief petty officers room five of them one thing it's like just how small the hatches are going through here so here's a, a chart of the war patrols it arrived in uh, uh, Pearl Harbor, uh, 1st of April, 42. And these are all the patrols it went out on up until uh, February of 45. And the control room, when you're diving, you definitely want to see all green. That tells you all events are closed. If they're green, red, they're open. Same with the hatches and doors. And how they control the the dive and all that, which I'm sure you've all seen in movies. So I'm up inside the, the conning tower, right above the control room, and uh, this would have been the. Uh, the computer to set to uh, relay down to the how far the uh, um, torpedoes and all that the angle and here's the uh, periscope so. and another 
narrow or small hatch to get through which leads us to the galley much smaller uh, crew so much smaller galley gotta have your ice cream oh, this is where the crew would have ate and played cards and backgammon So that's one of the uh, storage batteries for when uh, they were underneath the floor here. And this is the, the crew's quarters. There were 36 bunks in here, but uh, some of them were designated hot bunks where you're going on, on duty, you're getting out of the bunk, and somebody else just came off duty is getting in, which in the South Pacific probably was a little damp and sweaty. But uh, they also had some lockers along in here. So there were 252 of those batteries that split up into two different battery compartments and uh, off of the uh, the crew's quarters was the head. And of course the laundry, another shower. So this is the forward engine room that uh, Basically, it was a couple of big um, power you know, electric uh, generators that run on, run on diesel, and they would uh, power the same electric motors um, that were used when it submerged. They would use these uh, when they were uh, on the surface. But just look at the uh, the controls, and uh, I'm gonna go. It was probably. A little noisy in here. So a little cutaway of uh, what one engines looks like. <laughs> a little bit bigger than the one on my bus. So this is where the uh, you know controls to for the engines get them everything spinning in the right direction. So here's the. Uh, Half torpedo room. I got a torpedo half loaded down here, and uh, put on the. I guess slide this out. Load another one from wherever. Uh, obviously, two. So they have four on this side, and I would guess uh, there must be a way to connect this across and bring it over. Um, and of course, you're not going to waste space is you'd have bunks uh, for the, uh, the crewmen that probably that man this area. And if you're after a, a sinking in uh, 1927 of a uh, submarine that the uh, whole crew was lost, there's a lieutenant came up with this idea. It was Lieutenant uh, Momsen came up with this idea of basically it was a uh, a bladder connected to some air and you'd strap it on real quick mouthpiece and uh, hopefully you'd have enough air to get up to the surface hopefully you down here to the aft end of the ship uh, sort of cool you know I've never been on a sub before so uh, a lot shorter video as far as uh, the ship is concerned, but we're going to check out some of these planes. Um, and we can't tour that, but that was a uh, that was developed for uh, special forces. It's, it uh, got three propellers, three engines, and uh, it was a patrol boat that could get in in and out of places fast. And uh, so that's what that that one is. So what we're coming up on, what that is, is a replica of the Confederate ship, the uh, first uh, man-powered submarine in the Civil War, maybe the only one, the Huntley. Uh, they did discover uh, the remains of the Huntley many years ago. Uh, I think it was in South Carolina. Um, but this is a, a replica. So imagine that was a Civil War submarine. 
And that's a World War II submarine. So they also have uh, a uh, collection of planes. And one that I've always been interested in was the, uh, the Blackbird. It is way smaller than I expected, but that was like the fastest plane ever made as far as I, I know. Um, they use this for high, high level uh, photo recon missions over Russia. So uh, technically, all this equipment still belongs to the Navy. That's why this young lady is uh, inspecting things. They come in periodically and make sure that everything is, is still up to snuff and they can take it back if they need it. We got a little bit of everything around here and even a, a flight simulator. So this is the uh, type of craft they used in uh, Vietnam in the rivers. A couple of dual 50 caliber it looks like. So I'm not going to get into all the details about every craft that's here, every plane that's here. Um, if you get to Mobile, Alabama, I would suggest you uh, definitely come check it out. There is a ton of info on each of these. And uh, like I said, there's no way I'm going to be able to let you know all of it. So this particular helicopter was actually, uh, was, uh, was it Army One, I think? And it was uh, used by uh, uh, President Bush, the first one. So this 1941 Deuce and a Half uh, has the, the red ball on the front, uh, designating that this would have been part of the uh, Red Ball Highway. And it was basically by using these trucks, and um, mainly it was African-American uh, drivers, because the army was segregated at that time, but they were able to move 12 and a half, or I'm sorry, 12,500 tons of supplies every day. Um, they had uh, 5,958 vehicles running this, and they, uh, the highways designated the Red Ball Highways were uh, off limits to civilians, and uh, these trucks were given the uh, right of way uh, over everything. Uh, the only way that uh, Patton and his army uh, moved so fast that it was these guys trying to keep up. Sometimes they'd, they got so f going so fast they ended up behind enemy lines and Patton would catch up to them. Um, but that's, uh, these brave men were able to uh, prove that uh, they were worth having in the army to do uh, what needed to be done. By the way, there is a movie called The Red Ball Express. I am still looking for it. I saw it as a kid. It's an excellent movie and really uh, showed the uh, heroism of these guys. So speaking of uh, African-Americans in uh, World War II, you know, I'm pretty sure you've all heard of the Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, they painted the tails of their, their planes red and uh, they sort of became known as the, the Red Tail Angels because these guys uh, basically did things that uh, were not expected of them and they excelled at what they did. So if you remember from uh, last week's video, uh, this would have been the type of uh, float plane that was uh, launched from the Alabama. This is a C-47D Skytrain. Uh, saw extensive use during World War II uh, as a cargo plane and uh, before that actually American Airlines flew it but they modified it by strengthening the floor and putting in cargo doors which are on the other side. So that was the uh, Sherman tank of World War II. And this is the M60, uh, I believe it's the Abrams. Quite a bit difference. And the one back here was the uh, M26 Pershing. 
they got quite a collection of uh, tanks and this one up here does not have the turret but it would be the M42 Duster uh, it's got the the dual guns in the front said after World War II they uh, instead of moving a lot of troops right into battle on trucks and may march in they had the armored uh, armored vehicles the uh, Marine Corps adopted the uh, uh, it's a uh, amphibious vehicle where the uh, had a little bit of light armor it would hold off uh, small arms but not much health and uh, so they could take the troops right right onto the shore so not only do they have uh, US Armed Forces but this is a Soviet uh, what was it T-55 T main battle tank uh, so interesting addition to the collection so this is the uh, B-52 that was used uh, in Vietnam this is the night camouflage obviously light on top so any planes looking uh, from above uh, would blend into the ground but from below it would blend into the dark night sky uh, flew a lot of, of bombing missions it's been de demilitarized but uh, that's uh, got an idea of just how big a, a B-52 really is well with that B-52 I think I'll leave uh, it's been a interesting few hours here and uh, you could spend a lot more time than uh, than I did here, but uh, it's it's well worth it. See you later, YouTube.